Hi church, it's pastors Jen and Jacob here with another digital devotion. So you may have heard of something about cheap grace, which is something, it's a concept that comes from a theologian named Dietrich Bonhoeffer. But today we actually wanna talk about something a little bit different, which is cheap hope. So obviously right now we're all in a time of stress and chaos. 2020 has just been a total mess of a year for so many reasons that just keep piling up. And a lot of us have been searching for hope. And I think that it would be disingenuous of us as pastors to say that everything is fine. You know, um, here's hope on a silver platter every Sunday morning. I think that as much as we would all probably like that, it would be cheap hope. And what I mean by that is that it would really not be serving us spiritually and deeply and honestly to ignore the wreckage all around us. And by the wreckage, I mean everything that's coming down the pike politically, everything that has contributed to this upheaval in terms of recognizing the racial injustice in our nation, all of these things that are just um, really becoming obvious this year, climate change and its terrible effects on so many different parts of the world. And so if I were to just get up every Sunday and tell you everything is great, God loves you, this is just a, a flash in the pan and don't worry. You know, I think that really wouldn't be serving us well long term. I think we have to deal with, what's, with what is right in front of us, which is some really difficult stuff. And we have to work through all of that um, inner turmoil, especially in terms of the racial injustice, especially in terms of recognizing how we contribute to climate change as people who live in a wealthy, privileged nation, you know, and especially how we're interacting with people on the other side of the party line. So I think, you know, just by telling you that um, everything is great and God is love, you know, now is really not the time when that serves us best. There was a time when we were thinking about preaching on a text from the book of Judges that's one of the most horrific texts in the scripture. Um, a, a theologian by the name of Phyllis Tribble calls it a text of terror. And it's where this woman is raped and left for dead. And then she's cut into 12 pieces and sent to all the tribes of Israel as a way to symbolize just the horror that they've descended into. And someone came to us and said, you know, you really shouldn't preach on that because there's no hope in that passage. And there was this expectation that at the end of every service, the people in the church would leave with hope. And our response to that was, you know what? We're playing kind of a long game here in terms of the story of Christianity and the story of Jesus. There's more than one Sunday in the year. And so if we come together and worship and we don't leave with this grand, wonderful, joyful declaration of hope and that everything's going to be okay, that's because we're going to come back the next week. And maybe the next week we'll find a little bit more hope. You know, you recently preached on that passage of the dry bones. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the most hopeful, comforting passages in all of Scripture because it's life being breathed into something that was dead. But you have to go into the valley of dry bones first. You have to survey the death. You have to survey everything that's gone wrong before you can breathe new life into it. Mm -hmm. Because you can't have a new life until you recognize and accept and take stock of what is dead. Right. I mean, that is that is the story of the the Easter story, right? That we don't get Easter Sunday until we go through Good Friday. Like we go through the cross to get to the resurrection. That is part of the, the Christian narrative. Yeah. Yeah. So we just know that you are going to be with us through this Christian spiritual journey and that each week we may descend down and come back up. We may stay up one week or we may have to go down and stay down in one week. And honestly, I personally am, am drawn to what I like to call no BS spaces in yeah, my life, which is yeah. one of the reasons I love prison ministry and jail ministry. And um, when I, I love talking to people who are in recovery or people who um, have worked through addictions because I feel like those people really thrive in no BS spaces. And so I I value the church being a no BS place and I value being a no BS preacher. I think that giving it to you straight and and giving it to you the way that I see it and the way that I, I feel that God is calling me to preach it is in fact a hopeful thing. Because if I were telling you, you know, rainbows and sunshine and flowers all the time, 
I don't think that's hopeful. I think that's that's cheap and I think it's fake. <laughs> yeah, that's really well put. And so we will be going, like I said, um, through these ups and downs together. And we'd have this ultimate hope in Christ's resurrection. And so that should always comfort us, I think. Yeah. But we will also confront the hard, difficult, scary, challenging parts of life together. And we'll take them face on for what they are. Our faith is a long game, in other words. So yeah. stick with us. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give thanks for not cheap hope, but real hope. And we give thanks for the fact that our hope lies in you and you are a steadfast God and you remain truthful and genuine and ever loving through the chaos, through the turmoil, through the upheaval. And even though we are walking through that right now, God, we have hope that you are still with us and that by opening our eyes and opening our hearts and minds to what is really going on all around us, that you will lead us into a new place. And on the other side, we, we find hope. So in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. See you next time. See you next time.